In this video we will talk about sequential synchronous circuits again, however this time we'll talk about the synthesis of this type of circuits. So what is the synthesis of a sequential circuit? So basically first you start with a diagram. Before we had a circuit and then we built or we analyzed how the circuit behaved. Now we have a diagram of how we want the system to behave. Here we have a series of states running, reset, paused, configuring, and ended. And we're saying how we want the system to behave. Of course, this is not a complete diagram. It still needs work. But once we have the diagram of how we want the system to behave, we're going to try to get the circuit that implements this diagram. We're not analyzing it. We are designing it. So what are the usual steps for building your circuit? First of all, you need to derive a state table from a verbal description of the problem. Then you want to use state reduction techniques to determine an equivalent state table in order to reduce the use of flip-flops. In this video, we will not see the state reduction techniques. You will see this on the next video. And then you want to choose an assignment of states and generate the state transitions tables and outputs. You also want to determine the device memory to use in this case the flip-flop, and you also want to get the flip-flop excitation table. You have to use these tables in order to obtain the needed inputs of the flip-flops by using the previous techniques we have seen, such as Boolean algebra or k-maps. Then you want to get the output functions, and finally you're going to implement the synchronous sequential circuit. So what are the excitation tables? Think of them as the opposite of the way the flip-flops behave. For example, in the first table we have the D flip-flop, and if you remember the D flip-flop table, it's if you have a zero on the input, then the output is going to be zero. And if you have a one on the input, you're going to have a one in the output. So in this case, it's the opposite. In this case, I'm telling you what happens if I give you the output first, what input is needed in the D flip-flop. So for that, we need two states. We need the previous state of the output and we need the next state of the output. This is what this is expressing. So for example, in the first row, it says if the previous state is zero and the next state is zero, what is the input that I need in a deep flip-flop in order to get that result? And of course, this is very simple because I only care about the current, I'm sorry, or the next state of the flip-flop. So in this case, the D is going to be exactly as the next state. Now let's talk about the T flip-flop. When you have a T flip-flop, if you remember, if you have a zero, then you're going to get Q. That means you're going to have exactly the same as you had before. And if you have one, you're going to have Q inverted. So now we want to know if we want a specific behavior in a T flip-flop, what is the input that we need to generate in order to get this behavior? So if we look at the first row, we see that the previous state is zero and the next state is zero. So we don't want the output to change. And if we don't want the output to change, then we need t equal to zero. If we look at the second row, in the previous state, q is zero, and the next state, q is one. So it's becoming the opposite. So we actually want the flip-flop to invert its value. So if we want that to happen, we need to put in t a one. And of course, this is also going to happen here and a zero here because I don't have a change of state between one and one. Now, what happens with a JK flip-flop? Well, in a JK flip-flop, it's a little different. If you remember the flip-flop, JK, this is the behavior. Now, if you see the first row, we're saying if the previous state is zero and the next state it's also zero, what are the inputs needed in J and K in order to get this behavior? So, and actually we have two rows that fulfill this behavior. The first row, it's this one here, because we're telling the output to be zero, and that's what we want. We want the output to be zero. But if you realize the state is not changing from zero to zero, so we can also see that this is, or this can be also the input that we want in JK. That means that I can put in JK, I can put either a 0, 0 or a 0, 1. 
And any of those two inputs in the flip-flop are going to give me the result that I want, which is that Q is going to be zero. So that means that this is going to be, or is going to be summarized as being J equals to zero, and the K, it doesn't matter what it is. It can be zero or one. It doesn't matter. It's going to give me the same result. So the inputs needed for that particular row, it's zero, and I don't care for K. So this is the flip-flop excitation table. It's what inputs are needed on the flip-flops in order to get the result that I want. These are the finished excitation tables of the flip-flop. Notice this one here that we just talked about is the zero don't care, and I just explained why. I recommend that you analyze all these other options and also all these over here. Now, how do we build a circuit? Well, here we have an example. We have a state diagram of three states and a series of transitions between those states. And we want to see how this circuit or how can we build a circuit in order to get this result. So first of all, I have the circuit that I want to build on top and I'm going to go with the procedure. First of all, I want to have the state assignment and the state assignment is very important because if you change this state assignment, you're going to have different circuits. And when I say different circuits, I mean the circuits are going to be connected differently. However, they're all going to do the same thing as long as you are consistent with your assignment. Now you notice also that we have a question mark and that question mark is because we don't have a fourth state. If we have two flip-flops, then we have a possibility to build four different states. And since we don't have four states, this state, the one one, uh, I don't have it assigned. So it's as if it doesn't exist. However, the combination of the memories does exist. So after I do this, I want to build the state table. And the state table, if you remember, is just putting out what's on the diagram in order to get a different way of expressing the same. So if I'm at zero, zero, it's as if I'm in A and I have an input of zero, then I'll go to B, as you can see in this diagram. And if I go to B, then B is zero, one. So I put here zero, one. And I generate an output of zero. So I put a zero. We have already seen this. And you just want to fill this table. And if you fill this table, you're going to get to this. And this is the finished table. Now, notice how I put on these two rows, I'm sorry, in this row, I put a don't care, don't care, slash don't care. And why is that? Well, that is because I'm considering that the state one one is going to exist. However, even if it's going to exist, I don't have it assigned. So that means that we're never going to have this state. And if we're never going to have this state, I don't care what happens with that state because Either way, I'm never going to get to that state. Now, after I do this, I need to fill sort of a truth table. It's just a rearrangement of this state table in order to see what are the desired behavior. So, for example, in the first row, we have 0, 0, 0. And that gives me this one here. So, when I want that, I need to be Q1 to be 0, Q0 to be 1 and the output to be zero. If I go to any other place, let's say this one here, I want to uh, take a look at Q1, Q0, it's one zero, and this would be here, one zero, with an input of one. So if I have these conditions, I am going to go to one zero and generate an output of zero. So you actually have to fill all the state table to this truth table. Now. Before we proceed, you need to know that you need to have the state transitions that we talked about. This is very important. Now, this is going to be the hardest part in this type of problems. Uh, if we remember on the previous slide, we said that if we are at zero, zero, we're going to go to zero, one and generate an output of zero. This is going to help me to see what inputs each flip-flop has to have at that particular combinations in order to get this behavior. Now, what is the behavior that we're talking about? The behavior is if you have a Q1 of zero, 
Now here I made a little mistake, I'm sorry, this is Q with small caps, Q1 with small caps. So if we have a previous state of Q1 of 0 and we want the next state of Q1, notice how we care about the same number, then it means that we want this particular row of behavior. So that means that uh, J1 is going to be 0 or is going to need to have 0 and K, I don't care what it has. Okay, this is the way you fill this table. And next, we want to see uh, the behavior for Q0. So Q0 is going from 0 to 1. And going from 0 to 1 is the row here. And for that to happen, I need to have 1, don't care. So you also need to fill all this table uh, with all these conditions. And I'm going to do it a little faster. Now here I jump to the x equal to 1 because I'm in this part of the table. And I'm done. So after I, I have this information, I need to fill all the j's and k's. So one thing that is going to help you fill this uh, faster is to look at some uh, thing that happens here. Let's analyze what happens with j's. So with j's, you see that when you have q previous state being 1, then j is going to be donker. So on j's, you're going to have to look at q previous state and look for 1's. So for example, on q1, I have here the 1, so this is going to be donker, donker. And here we're also going to have donker, donker. Now for q's, it's the opposite. When Q is 0, when Q previous state is 0, then K is donker. So here is 0, then here is donker, and here is donker, donker. Now let's do the same for uh, J0. Now for J0, we need to look at Q0. So again, when Q0 is 0, I'm sorry, when Q0 is 1, J0 is going to be donker. So it's have donker here. Now, if you don't understand what I'm doing, don't worry, you can do this all one line and one line. It's going to take you more time, but it's going to give you the result anyways. Now, another thing that you need to notice is when you have donkers, so for example, in the third row, when you have the next state is donker, donker. So here we can say that we don't care what happened in that row. It's all donkers in those rows. And now we need to fill the remaining spaces. In J's, when you have Q being 0, then you see that J is a copy of the next state. 0 is 0, 1 is 1. So we're, for J1, we're going to look at Q1, but Q1 in the next state. So he, this is going to be a copy of Q1. So it's going to be 0 here, and it's going to be 1 and 1 here. And for J0, again, it's going to be a copy, but now it's a copy of Q0 in the next state. So here is going to be a 1, and here is going to be a 0, and here is going to be a 0. Now, the case is the opposite. If you see, when you have uh, 0 on the next state, you have 1 in K, and we have 1 here, you have a 0 here. So whatever you have in the Q in the next state, you're going to invert it. So for K1, we look at Q1, and it is the next state is 0, so it's 1 here. The next state is 1, so it's 0 here. And for K0, we look at uh, Q0. So if I have 0 here, I have 1 here, and 0 here, I have 1 here. And this is the way you fill this, uh, this table. Now here I have this table filled. The next part is to get the equations. And the equations are from the same procedure that we saw. We need to find the equations, uh, in this case, J1, K1, J0, K0, and zeta. And of course, I have already the equations here, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. And the way I'm gonna do it is with k-maps. So first of all, I'm gonna draw a eight k-map, an eight cell size k-map. And I'm gonna decide to put zero here, 
So those are the locations. Now my zero is this, of course, and this is my seven. So if I wanna have, for example, I'm gonna build first the uh, J1. So for J1, I see that we have zero in the zero and one. So I have a zero here and a zero here. And I also have a one in the four and the fifth combination. So I have a one here and a one here. All the remaining, it's donkers. So I have this came up. And of course, if I want that order of mean terms, I need uh, Q0 here, I need Q1 here, and I need X here. So if I analyze this came up, if I solve this, I have this solution, this over here, this would be my minimum solution, so J1 would be equal to X. And you see that this is what I have. So you can follow all this procedure with each column and you're going to get these equations. Now, after you have these equations, all you have to do is the final step. Uh, you want to implement this circuit. So to implement this circuit, it's pretty simple. You need two flip-flops. In this case, you need two JK flip-flops. So you have One thing that you need to uh, remember is that you have two flip-flops, so I'm gonna name this as flip-flop zero, and this is flip-flop one. Uh, one thing that is very important is that you never miss the clock, so the clock is going to be connected to the clock input. And after that, you just need to connect to make the connections. So for example, you have X here, the input, you have zeta here, the output. I'm gonna start with uh, the J0. So J0, it's x inverted so i'm making the inversions i make the inversion i'm sorry and i put it in j and for k0 i put it to high and for j1 i put in j i put the x and for k i put the inversion of x and that's it for my two flip-flops and after that i put the zeta and the zeta is the output of q0 so this is directly going to be Q0. So if you remember, this is the synthesis. And we started with this implementation or this desire of implementing this circuit or this diagram, and we got to this circuit. So I have a do-it-yourself example. Uh, I want you to build a two-bit up and down counter using JK flip-flops. The count is of course 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So I'm helping you with the state assignment. And the state diagram can go up with an input of 0, or it can go down with an input of 1. The output will be on when the counter resets. Either it goes from 3 to 0, or it goes from 0 to 3. Now, try to build the state diagram yourself. And if you struggle the solution of the diagram, it's going to be uh, just a few seconds after this. Please pause the video, try to make this example on your own, and then come back here to see if you did the state diagram correctly. So this is the state diagram. The state diagram is, uh, we have four states, which are zero, one, two, and three. So for example, if we're counting up, start with start at zero, we have an input of zero, it goes to one. We are at one, we have an input of zero, we go to two. Notice how zeta is always zero. We are at two, input of zero, we go to three. We go to three, input of zero, we go to one, to so zero. Now, this is a reset because we don't have a count of four. That's why we generate an output of zero. And this is the way you implement a two-bit up and down counter. With this information, you can build the circuit that implements this diagram. Thank you very much for watching.